Why, why Tesla? Why this standard? And do you think by you and Tesla teaming up together, you kind of win over and can change what's going to be the standard? It's a great question. So we believe that customers should have, as you said, the option of using either standard. And with adopters, ad adapters and software, we could do that both. But we really like the Tesla standard from a customer standpoint. When you look at how easy it is to plug in, if you drop the core, the, the Tesla system is more robust. Um, the other standard is great, and we'll have adapters for that. Uh, we also like their, their, like their locations. We like their charging technology. It works really well as well. So in 25, we're going to put their plug on our vehicle. Welcome to Money and Investment where your financial future starts today. Ever wondered why starting to invest when you're young is a game changer? Let's dive in. Investing in the stock market might seem daunting, but it's a powerful tool for building wealth. Why? It's all about time and compound interest. Starting young means more time for your investments to grow. Think of it like planting a tree. The earlier you plant, the longer it grows and the bigger it gets. Worried about risks? The earlier you start, the more time you have to recover and learn from market ups and downs. And if you're starting at 50, no worries. It's about choosing the right strategies suited to your stage in life. Starting early next year, Ford owners will be granted access to thousands of Tesla superchargers across the United States and Canada. It's part of a new partnership announced on Twitter Spaces by Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Ford CEO Jim Farley. Jim, welcome. This is some pretty big and pretty surprising news. Yeah, it was a big week for us, Becky and Andrew. Um, and this, this announcement, we think, will really help our EV customers have a, a much better experience. You know, they, it, it was surprising just from the perspective that you all are rivals. I don't know if you want to call respectful rivals, frenemies, something yep. along those lines. How, how did this deal come, <laughs> come about? What happened? Well, we've been actually working on it for a couple of years. You know, we know that charging, we're number two in EV sales in the U.S. behind Tesla. And we know charging is a really big deal for our customers and adoption. And we're now scaling. We're like basically doubling our EV capacity this year. And, and we're going to get to two million in a couple of years. So this is a big deal for, for the company and, and for our customers. And we have about 10,000 fast chargers now. This is going to double that. So 22,000 fast chargers, it'll be the best network of fast charging in the country for any brand, and, and that's why we were interested in it. Uh, we also like their, their, like their locations. We like their charging technology. It works really well as well. So in 25, we're going to put their plug on our vehicle. Yeah, Jim, I have to say, as a consumer, I think it's great. I, I love the idea of some sort of standardization or moving towards standardization yes. in the industry. No consumer wants to get stuck feeling like, oh, I finally found a charging station, but guess what? I can't use it. And you probably need a lot exactly. more of this to, to really beef up adoption of EVs across the country. Um, what I think is interesting about this is, you know, this is, if you went back to the VHS Betamax comparison on all of these mm -hmm. things, VHS eventually won out. You are choosing to go with Tesla, which has been uh, riding with the NACS standard. The, versus the CCS standard that the Biden administration and most of the U.S. automakers, EV makers, have, have been pushing. Why Tesla? Why this standard? And do you think by you and Tesla teaming up together, you kind of win over and can change what's going to be the standard? It's a great question. So we believe that customers should have, as you said, the option of using either standard. And with adopters, ad adapters and software, we could do that both. But we really like the Tesla standard from a customer standpoint. When you look at how easy it is to plug in, if you drop the core, the, the Tesla system is more robust. Um, the other standard is great, and we'll have adapters for that. But, but we also really love the locations. Like, I, I remember I was going on vacation with my kids. My kids kept saying, hey, Dad, can we stop there? That's one of those Tesla superchargers. I was like, no, kids, we're going to go over here behind this building. Um, and, you know, so... It's it's a it's a bet for our customers, and we want our customers to be able to use both systems actually with adapters. Jim, long term, when you think about this this friends enemy frenemy situation, <laughs> if Tesla becomes that standard, is that good or bad for you? I mean, as you as you try to evaluate and think through what that means over time. Yeah, we think it's it's good for us because we're going to have the Ford Pass software. 
So people don't have to leave the Ford Pass software that they use for charging at their home or, or to control, unlock the vehicle or use their phone as a key. When they go use the Tesla supercharger, they're still using Ford. We were right. very concerned if they had to switch over to use that Tesla software, but that was part of the deal. And it, it was a deal breaker for us for the reason right. you mentioned. And how seamless, there, therefore, will uh, payment and the like be using those su those superchargers? Yeah, so uh, early next year on the Ford Pass app, we're gonna have a bunch of different payment options like we do today. So customers just pay, use their, you know, um, e-pay system, whatever they choose. And um, there'll be no, you know, no issues. It'll be super simple. We're gonna ship a super, you know, an adapter uh, to everyone who's bought a Ford EV. This is not just for the future, it's for all the people who already bought our vehicles. So they'll get adapter from Ford, they go on Ford Pass, they pick the payment option they want, all the billing is the same as it is today. So it's gonna be right. super easy. And, and what do you think long-term the likelihood is that GM and others will follow suit and that effectively the Tesla superchargers will become the standard? I think there's a chance. The CCS is, is a great standard, but it was, pretty much done by kind of a committee. And I think GM and others are gonna have a big choice to make. Do they right. wanna have fast charging for a lot of customers or do they wanna stick to their standard and have less charging? So I, I, I don't know, but right. I think, you know, we're number two last year, they were number one. I, I think this is gonna be a tough choice for those companies. Ready to start your investment journey? Explore our channel for more insights on making smart, informed investment choices. Remember, it's never too late or too early to start investing in your future. Join us at Money and Investment for more tips and tricks on building your wealth. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out.